Closet, a Todd Mills Mystery. Book One, author R.D. Zimmerman, publisher, Scribble Pub, Minneapolis, Minnesota, narrator, Eric Ost. Chapter 21. Something started ringing and Cindy Wilson started twisting in her dreams. She had been floating in this huge placid lake, all so still, so black, and then this shrill, hideous sound came at her like a shrieky bird, a creature that plucked her out of that lake and uh, thus out of her sleep. In an instant, she was sitting on the edge of her bed. Dear Lord, she opened her eyes for a brief second and saw the digital alarm clock. 5.13 a.m. No, it wasn't the alarm clock ringing Ravel. It was the phone, and the stupid thing kept crying out. She forced her eyes open a bit more, forced herself to reach out for the receiver. Knowing most definitely who it had to be, she just wondered what it was about. Yeah, she mumbled into the phone. Cindy, it's me, Bonnie, said the young woman in night duty at the Channel 7 news desk. I figured. We just got a call. Uh-huh. It came right here to the news desk, said Bonnie. This was sounding familiar, and Cindy asked, what? I mean, whoever called in didn't do so on the cry my line. Cindy was waking up as quickly as if she had jumped into a cold lake. Could this be her second lucky break? Cindy asked, Another murder? Uh, right, uh, about... And you answered the call? Yeah. Male or female? Male, replied Bonnie. At least I think so. The voice was kind of deep and hoarse. Just like the first one. Where? Lake Calhoun in the bushes up between 32nd and 33rd Street. Oh my God, that's the gay beach. Did he say anything else? Did he? Hang on, said Bonnie, a tad frustrated by Cindy's impatience. It went like this. The phone rings. I pick it up. This hoarse voice says, there's another one. I say, another one what? He says, another body in the bushes. By Lake Calhoun, between 32nd and 33rd Street. I started to ask something else. He hangs up, and then I call you. Uh, that's it. So you haven't called the police yet? No, but I... Give Mark a call. Tell him to meet me at 33rd and Lake Calhoun Parkway in 10 minutes, instructed an eager Cindy. Then wait two minutes and call the police. Got it? Of course. Oh, and don't forget to save a spot on Sunrise 7 for us, she added, referring to the 7 a.m. news program. I can feel this is going to be good. Uh, call Locker, too. Tell him I think we can begin Plan B. It was yet another beautiful morning in this fall of extraordinary weather, and the rising sun spread a golden cast over the glass-like surface of Lake Calhoun. But the perfect backdrop for the beginning of the story, thought Cindy Wilson. She and Mark Buchanan had it all planned out. She was going to be standing with the lake behind her. Then he'd swing around and zoom in on the hillside, and next they'd cut to the segment they'd been piecing together since before six this morning. Perfect. Yes, her stock at Channel 7 was rising quickly, and this story very well might clinch her promotion. The crime eye might be all hers. She opened her compact, stared at the small mirror, and noted that her blonde hair was all in place. The deep red lipstick was fresh and expertly applied, too. Good. Putting away her compact, Cindy smoothed her black leather jacket, which put her trim body perfectly. She had been wearing the same jacket since she arrived hours ago, and... Although she'd considered switching to her burgundy wool coat, which was up in the Channel 7 van and looked so great against the tones of her skin, management downtown had told her to stick with the leather. Much better, they'd said, made it look like she was actively involved in the investigation. Which, in a very real way, she was. After all, she'd found the body. Thirty seconds, called Mark, tightening his camera on the tripod. Cindy assumed her position, adjusted her earpiece, flicked at one stray hair. Clear your head. Think this through. Start with the sunrise, the beauty, move into the murder. Yes, this was going to be great. And be sure, she told herself, be absolutely sure to mention the bit about the suspect. Tell them to stay tuned to Channel 7 for this unfolding story of murder. And five, four, three, two, one, announced Mark. You're live. A microphone in her right hand, Cindy looked directly into the camera. It 
It's a beautiful dawn out here on Lake Calhoun. With the morning sun cutting through the trees, reflecting off the glassy surface of this popular lake. It's just after seven in the morning, and already scores of joggers and bicyclists are out enjoying the day. Uh, but is this lake, this park, as beautiful and safe as we would all like to believe? Evidently not. For early this morning, another man was murdered, apparently knifed to death at an area where gay men reputedly seek anonymous sex. Once again, the Cry My team has been on the story from the very start, alerting the police and aiding in the investigation. And here's what we learned. The camera turned away from Cindy, showed the bushy hillside, and then faded away. Cindy turned toward a small monitor and watched the clip she and Mark had prepared. Shortly after 5 this morning, Channel 7 received an anonymous tip, claiming that a man had been killed in this area. Came Cindy's voice over as the video showed a large clock in the station downtown. Our night manager of the news desk then alerted both me and the police of the mysterious call, and all of us immediately rushed to this area of Lake Calhoun, frequently known as the Gay Beach. The video showed the police and Cindy Wilson searching the area, flashlights in hand. And what we found was indeed a body. As graphically as could be portrayed on television, the camera showed the sequence of events. As Cindy Wilson narrated, there was shouting and hollering, then Cindy gasping, trying to maintain control, trying to look both professional and resolute. Yes, the body, Cindy shouted. The cops came running, and the camera zeroed in on one hand poking out of the brush. Then there was a huge blood stain on the hillside an ambulance flashing lights, the arrival of the crime lab, more shouting and chaos, and lots of Cindy Wilson looking official, concerned and professional, always professional, and then back to Cindy live, standing on the banks of the picture-perfect lake. Uh, the victim of this grisly murder was a white male, thought to be in his early 30s. While the police are not releasing the victim's name, pending notification of relatives, uh, the crime I team has learned that the cause of death initially appears to be multiple knife wounds. This is speculation, but it is quite possible that early this morning, uh, the victim was seeking anonymous sex in these bushes and was attacked and killed in the process of that. It's much too early to reach any conclusions, of course, but off the record, several police officers have already commented on the similarity of this murder to the one just last week. That murder occurred only ten blocks away in Kenwood, and I'm sure many viewers will recall seeing Channel 7's own Emmy Award-winning Todd Mills led away by the police. Although he was released, Mr. Mills was held overnight for questioning for the murder of Michael Carter, his homosexual lover, who died from multiple knife wounds. Whether the man found dead this morning was also gay remains to be known, but police are not discounting a link between the two. However, I did personally note a wedding band on the victim's left ring finger. Needless to say, the tranquility of this beautiful autumn morning has been shattered by this grisly murder. While murder is by no means new to Minneapolis or St. Paul, it is rarely seen in the heart of the wealthy Kenwood area or in the beautiful Lake District, which really is the pride of the entire city of Minneapolis. I have been assured by the head of police, Captain Lou Olson, that these two cases are top priority. I should add, there has already been one very interesting development in this case that might lead to a solution of this murder, and perhaps also that of Michael Carter, continued Cinder Wilson. A piece of evidence was found near the scene of the crime this morning. While I'm not at liberty at this moment to divulge anything further, an item was found in the bushes that police feel might lead to an arrest. The police are excited and pleased about this, and I would like to assure you that the Crime I team will keep you completely informed for any developments in this exciting and fast-breaking story of murder and gay sex. For the Channel 7 Crime I team, this is Cindy Wilson. A Gay Mysteries Audiobooks I think it is easy to hate a label, but a face humanizes the word. So this effort is twofold to offer comfort to those like myself that your world didn't end because you don't fit into the view of acceptable society on both sides. And in hopes of helping those with family that are LGBTQ, that it doesn't mean we are aliens from the child they once knew, reassure them so they can maybe be supportive at the same time being true to their values.